if you could go out with one Villa player for, for New Year's Eve night, who would it be? I don't know, who would you? Alan Hutton. Alan Hutton? Yeah, I think he'd be lively. I mean, most of our local rivals, when they get anything against us, they seem to celebrate it like a win, which is not how I like to operate. It's quite a small time. But sure, but then... Just no, a little prank. There. No. Frank Sinatra. Didn't see that. No, okay. And somebody came up to Dan. I was like, oh, I love what you do with the Villa View. It's so good. Love the podcast. Love the podcast. <laughs> I, mean, I am literally half of the podcast. And uh, Dan's just like, oh, yeah, there's Tom as well. He's like, who? Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast with myself, Dan Bardell, and Thomas Julian. I he said Happy New Year, but it's not Happy New Year. It's not yeah, happy. And it's not a happy time at all. Villa have pretty much ended the decade as we started in a bit of bother. Yeah, I mean... It's one of those, isn't it, where we're... Uh, you, you, <laughs> we, we talked about when we went up, stick with Smith, it's going to be a tough season, we're yeah. going to have to ride it out, and now we're in a bit of a mire, and it's not Vi- nice. Villa's returning to the way... I mean, again, we're going to talk about it's OK to be critical, but we are down in the doldrums as fans at the moment. I know social media exacerbates it all, but it's not a good look right now. No, I mean, we were in the toilet before. before <laughs> we were talking Both in the, metaphorically yeah, and literally. We were talking in the toilet before we came into, into the booth, <laughs> and you, you were saying it would be nice if we had seven points to talk about. And I said, to be honest, we're lucky we've got three points to talk about yeah. because the Norwich game didn't particularly feel brilliant. I felt like we were a little bit outplayed in that, and it's... It's just miserable and it's all accumulating what was probably the worst defeat of the season. Yeah, so we've got three games to talk about. We won't go through each one in, in as much depth. We I mean, they all merge into one at the end, pretty much, don't they? There's definite themes between all three, which are, which are not so pleasant. So we'll touch on each of them, have a little look at the table and, and, and get a couple of questions as well. But there are, as I say, some overarching themes that, that we need to talk about and we'll get to them as we go. So are you ready to dive in? Not really, no. but I mean, we're going to have to. Well, let's start then chronologically, as as we want to do. Aston Villa 1, Southampton 3 on the 21st. And that going into that game, we're off the back of a 5-0 win. Obviously, League Cup, um, it, we can't read too much into it. But, you know, you hope that there's a bit of a bounce from that, whether it's because uh, obviously a 5-0 win's good, but... You hope that Villa don't think too much about them beating kids and and actually a good kind of team performance. What was the atmosphere at Villa Park going into that game? Quite quite positive. I think that was the the point where we all we all thought. I mean, it's easy. It's, it's not easy. It's like weird to talk about it now because I feel so long ago and there's been so, so many games since. But it was kind of like right. The excuses now have, have got to stop. Mm. This is this is where it's this is where it begins. We've got the tough run of games out of the way a couple of home games against struggling sides around us and, and we, we can get a bit of positive momentum going but complete opposite Southampton ca- came and did an absolute number mm. on us that their setup was was perfect they they stifled us they, they harassed us closed us down and they looked pretty vibrant and, and classy going forwards as, as well and we, we couldn't live with them and that that's worrying not yeah. being able to live with with Southampton I mean fair play to them they lost nine nil to Leicester earlier earlier on in the season, but you'd have thought that would have completely sapped confidence. Like I know it was a while ago, but they played some nice football, and I can't house House and Hurl has, has stuck to his his beliefs and his principles. He's kind of playing the formation that that worked well for them last season with the two city midfielders, mm. just two out and out wingers and two strikers. It did feel a little bit like Shane Long was just dragged out of the cupboard to play against <laughs> against Villa, and he he did well against us yeah. as he always does, and. As much as I've def- defended Wesley in the past, they've got a striker that's bang on form in Danny Ings, who knows where the goal is. But then, if we, if we give goals to teams, people like Danny Ings are going to score against us. Yeah, and uh, uh, the frustrating thing there's two points here. One, I tend to make notes as I'm going along watching the game, and I wrote during during this game that Southampton were playing some of the football that Dean Smith had started playing when yeah. when when he was at Villa it was fast it was attacking there was triangles being played we just haven't seen that in in the last kind of month six weeks or so and I, I ended up writing exactly the same thing for the Watford game as well like they, they came at I, us I'd imagine you could have wrote in the Norwich game well, well the Norwich game yeah a little bit uh, to a lesser extent I suppose but yeah there's there's that kind of uh, DNA of those teams that are all struggling down the bottom, but they're but they're sticking to this kind of passing way of football, and that seems to have gone. I don't know whether it's Mings that, that's one of the reasons, the kind of solidity that he gave us out from the back that we don't have the confidence to do that anymore, or whether it's McGinn, or whether it's just a general lack of confidence. Well, there's definitely a lack of confidence at the moment. But has that sparked from 
Mings going out, or is it? Where, where's that come from? Because oh, we're going to come on to Smith and 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 whether he should be safe or not. We'll come on to that. But there does seem to be a, a change in the way we're playing now, and I don't I don't know where that's come from because we were playing some nice football before. I don't feel like the players have been instructed to play a different way. No. We, we just can't seem to play now yeah. in, the, in that way that, that we were before. I think we could all agree in the first few months of the season that when we were losing games, we were losing by the odd goal. Generally, we could take positives and say, oh, we've, we've played well, we've gone ahead mm. in, in a fair few games. In the defeats that we're having now, I'm struggling to walk away with any positives. I yeah. mean, the Watford game, we looked like we'd never met each other before which is a concern at, at this, this stage of the season. I mean, there's some strange team choices for that, for that game as well. Mm. I think we've been found out a little bit in terms of, of squad depth, and I think we've yep. been found out in a little bit in terms of experience of knowing what to do when the chips are down in the Premier League, someone to, to put their foot on the ball and calm us down in the middle of the, middle of the park. I mean, obviously Jack is that player who can put his foot on the board, he can protect the ball and run, run with the ball. But I think we're missing a, a calming influence in defensive midfield, mm. but perhaps to, to calm us down and make the right decisions yep. at, the, at the moment. And Southampton had Ward, Prowse and Hjoberg in midfield and they were better than our midfield that, that they ran it, to be honest. They, they've, got a bit, they've got a bit of pace yep. as well. That's something that we just do not have, yep. especially when you take Gilbert out and Trezeguet doesn't play. There's, there's a real lack of pace in that side and I'm not, not for one minute saying those two players are on top form but at least they've got a little, a little, little bit of speed about them we're just very one paced at the moment and we're, we're getting found out but the biggest thing is making stupid mistakes and well, if you make stupid mistakes at this level you will lose football matches definitely and I, I wanted to go back to to the second point which came came off your point about Ings you know Ings was first to react for, for Southampton's yep. first goal Cry of a bad side again we saw that against Watford Deeney's first to react to, to the spill ball but I just wanted to compare that, and I'm not going to get on his back. But but El Ghazi and uh, and Wesley are up front for Villa against Southampton. Target puts a beautiful ball in very early, um, and we should have a centre forward on that front line, somebody to just to just knock that home. Wesley's off the pace; it just doesn't look like he's making the runs. Whereas Ings c- completely loses Target. Target, to be fair, is ball watching in the situation, but Ings is standing on his own. He's the last man there, and he's just there to to tap in the goal. None of the Southampton goals were difficult. No, no. They're, they're just easy finishes, and it's, that's so frustrating. I looked at Southampton's defence, and I saw their goalkeeper, McCarthy, who yeah. at best is a, he's a backup goalkeeper I agree. at this level. Yeah. Bedenek and Stevens at centre-half. I looked at that before the game and thought, that's probably as bad a centre-half pairing as you're going to face. I don't the, mind Stevens, but yeah, in, I, I, in, I in agree. In the Premier League, it's not, not a good pairing, yeah. but... I mean, I don't, I, Engels has made a bad error for the, for the first goal. Hawes has done OK since he's been in the last three games, but... You look at that and think, well, that's not a great centre half pairing mm. either. But they made our centre half pairing look bad, whereas we didn't lay a glove on theirs. And we've got a good goalkeeper as well who's making saves and he's, he's a real big presence in there. Who's, I think I had him down to, to be our player of the season. And I think the way the season's going at the moment, if, if there's a good chance of that coming true because I think he's going to be very busy and he has been very busy. Well, I tweeted that during the Norwich game as well. Yeah. yeah. To not lay a glove on that back, back line. That's worrying. Yeah, I know confidence does play a part. We're obviously missing a couple of players as well, but there's no there's no excuse for that. You've you've got to get there and you've got to have a go. Mm. And we're not we're not doing that at the moment. That's what Dean Smith teams do. You might ship a few goals, but you'll you'll always make chances and you'll have a go. And that side of the game has just gone at the moment mm. for Villa. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's it, it's the basics in the back four. Like like I say, the target. Is watching what what's happening in the play. Doesn't see that Ings has just drifted off him, and and he's he's perfectly onside, and and there's nothing wrong with Ings's goal. But that's that's simple stuff from us. Engels gets caught uh, the I ball over the top. What Engels was doing because I watched. I'm obviously sitting in the whole end, so I'm directly behind yeah. that ball coming towards me. And Shane Long is quick. He's quicker than Engels. Engels isn't fast. Mm-hmm. So as a defender in that situation, you see a ball. You you could see the ball over the top was about to come. It yeah. was obvious. Shane Long's running towards you. You don't take a step forward. Mm. You drop back in and, and and cover it off. And also, I think maybe Hawes and Engels won't have played together before. I think if that's Mings, he perhaps senses a bit of danger and starts to move across a little bit. But that pairing isn't there with Engels and Hawes. That's another mm. thing. We've got different people playing every week at the moment and it's a simple ball over the top and it's completely caught Engels out he's not got the pace to, to get back in and then you're saying as well targets ball watching at the at the moment I don't, I don't really want to sit, sit here and attack individuals and I'm sure we'll come on to that because obviously I did do a tweet that 
<laughs> got a bit of blowback after the Norwich game, but target is looking a li- at the moment a little bit like the, the target that the Southampton fans were saying he was when we signed him. He started off really good for us because we were playing good football and going forward, and that suits him. At the moment, when we're having to dig in and defend, that doesn't suit his game in particular. A few Villa fans have, have said that he's not been up for the fight, and I think we've defended him. I mean, he's down on, injured every game on, at the moment. On this podcast, yeah. And so he's either seriously injured and therefore needs some treatment. But to be honest, it seems like it's a different injury every time. He's coming and, across a little bit lightweight at the moment, I target. Agree. I that's agree. just the way it's coming across. He might not be. He might genuinely be injured. I'm sure he probably is, but it's coming it's coming across a little bit lightweight, a little bit like he's not got the stomach for the for the fight at the moment. I yeah. don't like saying that, and I, as I say, I'm sure it's not that, but that is how it's coming across. And that's the point of this, not the podcast necessarily, but fans, we are trying to keep this team accountable, and and that's the way it does look like at the moment. I think you and I, I think most people would say that we give everybody as much benefit of the doubt as possible, but Target does look like he's. He's either yeah not in the right physical condition to play Premier League football, or or he's not up for it. He's a pre- I think he's a Premier League player. He's been in and around the Premier League for a, f- a fair amount of, of years now. But the, there will be a reason why Southampton were happy to let him go. Well, he's up for it going forward because I, I, like I'm he I'm, every yeah. every time I'm writing these notes, he's the one that's putting in the cross where we should be kind of scoring. He's a good if, player going forward, but I, I think he's a wing back. I don't think defending comes naturally to him and. We're under a lot of pressure at the moment. It seems are bullying us, and he's coming out the wrong end of that for me. Well, you can you compare it to to Liverpool. I obviously had a lot of time with my dad. I talked. To, I talked just a little side note. I you we, we FaceTimed on Christmas Christmas Day. Man, because I couldn't work quite, my purity keg out. That's quite a beautiful moment. That yeah, I really right, enjoyed okay. it. Uh, anyway, me and my dad were having a lot of chat about a lot of football. There's football all through the, the Christmas. As well, and, and I said to him, "Did you know?" Dan called you Brexit Kev, and that that created a wave of discussion. Did it you? was it was very interesting. Did you not know? That I called no, I, I thought my mum had told him, no. but, but he enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie to you. Anyway, um, we were talking about about how good Liverpool are because their wing backs essentially make. Liverpool a thirteen man side, you know. Thirteen man side, how's that work? Because That'd they be because they play like their midfielders and attackers, oh, so and they're doing the back okay, work as well. Interesting well, analogy, though. <laughs> yeah. But but the, do, do you know what I mean? That's what, where yeah. Villa are missing. In the, I thought. I mean, we're playing like we're a five a side. Yeah, <laughs> I thought when we started the season that the target and and um, Gilbert were giving us that that kind of work forward, and we were doing enough. At the back, I mean, and I've killed Gilbert's career getting him on the back of this shirt. Yeah, you really finished. have. That's finished. But him. they they gave us those those kind of attacking options and really spread the forward play. And now it seems like we're not getting either. Obviously, Gilbert's been been dropped. Um, we're, we're seeing a lot more of Elmo. I think he's just put Elmo in to just give us a bit of stability. Well, ain't working. <laughs> I know. I don't think you can look at Elmo and say he's been a problem. No, across the game, I think he. I thought he was good against Norwich but, actually. Well, Elmo. Again, what we've talked about all through the season is the stability of the back four. Yeah. Ming, Mings has gone out. And we, I don't think we've seen the same back four. No, that's what I said earlier. There's no chance to develop partnership. I think I think Engels was injured against what, for the Watford game. But Gilbert's been taken out from like. Do you know? What I mean? Gilbert's been a choice removal. He hasn't. He hasn't. Like he's lost his place maybe because he's not playing well. No, but, no. but that means that we're swapping the back four every single game. I mean, if you'd go through our summer signings at the moment, I don't think m- many of them are coming out as an unquantified success. Heaton at the moment, other than Heaton, I think Gilbert's been good. Yeah. Especially for the the low fee paid for him, I think Gilbert's adapted well to the Premier League. The rest are a little bit all up in the air. Then why is Gilbert not moment? playing? Because I just think, you know, I'm saying earlier about we need some some experience in there in the middle of the park. I think he's just trying to put an experienced head in there in Elmo, someone who's he's solid. He's not spectacular. He's, he might solid us up a little bit. And I do think in the Norwich game he contributed towards us getting that much needed clean sheet. Mm. To, to be fair, Elmo comes in and he does a job and he doesn't do much wrong, in in my opinion. But I did a tweet earlier, like a couple of days ago, after the Watford game. Just We bought heat in him because we wanted a little bit of experience. And it's all easy to say with hindsight now. And I was giddy with all the players we were signing as well. But we signed heat for the reason of having a bit of Premier League experience, a bit of, a bit of backbone, a bit of know-how in there. Mm. And I'm, 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 the way the fixtures are going at the moment, you look at the, around the rest of the team and you think, oh, that probably should have been applied in other positions as well because it's just not there at the moment. And I feel like we're sinking... And, Fast, yeah, and the players are looking for some some leadership. And yes, you've got you've got Jack, who is a spectacular player. He's the captain, led us to the the Premier League. He's the he's a captain in a different way to a, a stereotypical 
captain, like yeah. a blood and guts captain. Jack Lees, by example, by what he does on on the pitch, and I think the captaincy raises his game. Yeah, we need someone in there. I'm not saying for one minute we should have kept these guys, but you're looking for a Yedinak or a Whelan, but a Premier League quality quality version of them to just to just cajole them. A little bit, a little bit like John Terry would have. He was in the back four, and it's just not there at the moment. No, you're, you're right. Well, let's move on then. As again, Villa concede again uh, from from a set piece. Another header. Uh, Villa. I read that Villa have conceded more headed goals and more goals from corners than any other side in the Premier League this season. Jack Stevens beats Amwar Ghazi to the header, and you know that's a bit of a mismatch again, isn't it? I, I don't really know how that happens, but. It doesn't look like a... Sonal marking for you. Well, it doesn't look like a... But but they are man marking. I, I, El Ghazi tracks I always Stevens. look at us as being a little bit zonal. I feel, this might not be true, but it always feels like a different player is picking up a different player every time, depending on where they stand. That's yeah. just my, I might be wrong. Uh, That's just how I see it. I, I, I couldn't tell you... I couldn't tell you any different. But it is a mismatch, and, and El Ghazi doesn't really get close to Stevens, and it's quite a comfortable header from him. And again, Villa... That may be a maybe a byproduct of not having Mings, not having kind of a regular back four. But again, it's another easy goal to concede. I mean, we all know Ward Prowse can deliver a dead ball. Yeah, he's got one of the best deliveries in the in the Premier League. Ward Prowse, and he's he's picked out a good corner, and Stevens has headed it home. It's just like that's just easy, and we're developing really bad habits at the moment. We're conceding from set pieces, and we have done for a month or so now. We either concede a goal right on half time or right after half time at the moment pretty much every game as yeah. well and we're just developing habits that bad sides have and sides that go down i tell you another no. bad habit giving the ball away from our back four they give the ball away anywhere at the moment but, but rule number one like I, I I don't condone just booting it up and getting rid of it but you know we used to be a side that could pass it out from our back four and, and look comfortable on the ball but at the moment there's, there's several examples where we're giving it away in our back line and then it, the pressure just coming right back to us and Nakamba is, is at fault for the third goal it's, I couldn't even tell you what he was thinking it's calamitous I it, thought that sub was weird yeah obviously McGinn's gone off gone off injured which is an absolute disaster and it did set the tone for the day yeah and I do yeah, think I, haven't it, mentioned that I do think it did affect the players a little bit McGinn going off so early with that, what you could tell was a bad injury straight away mm. so that, that does that does affect you and he's a big part of the team and mm. anyone's going to miss He's in our top three best players, isn't he, John yeah, McGinn? He's, yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to be missed, and it affected us on the day, and it will affect us for the next the next three months. We're set up and would have, I presume, worked on Louise being at the base of the midfield all, all week. So then, obviously, you get an injury. I thought it was strange to then bring the camber on and move Louise forward. I thought, just bring Lansbury on. I'm not, I'm, I don't particularly rate Lansbury, but I would have just thought that would have made more sense at the, at the time. Nakamba's low on confidence at the moment. He's not doing it. Uh, not the only one. But no. Third goal, he's, he's so poor. I can't even work out what he's trying to do. He just looks cold, doesn't he, Nakamba? It, like, it just kind of hits him, and I'm not sure he knows. I don't think he knows what he's doing with it. And it he, just gets, kind of... he obviously gets caught between two things, but yeah. I don't know what those two things were. <laughs> weird. Neither of them are good, yeah. put, it, put it that way. The confidence thing, I think, is really interesting and majorly debilitating point I think it comes back to having Premier League experience to draw on and and that kind of uh, depth to, to kind of come back and fight and we we just seem so shallow in that department and you talk about Nakamba being low on confidence Douglas Louise you know I, I think you and I had a slightly different opinion on his performance against Norwich I thought he did okay but He's not the player that we thought we'd sign, and and these are the. I mean, some people talk about him like he's this world class central midfielder, and he may well turn out to be that one day. And I'm not. My tweet was harsh, and it came across way more harshly than, than I meant it to with, yeah. with, with Douglas Louise. I mean, we'll come on to the Norwich game. We'll talk mm. about him in the Norwich game. Yeah, well, I, I think the comparison is that when you tweet about Douglas Louise. Everyone says that we are we don't criticise Harahan at all, and I think we he do. Didn't play well against Watford. I, exactly, that's exactly what I was about to come on. To. But he comes up with the goods, but he, and he'll but, win you a game. But he scored against yeah. Norwich, and he's and he's the one that puts the ball in for um, for Wesley's Wesley's header again, which we'll talk about, uh, which could have been a, a, a kind of match defining moment. Um, but then, going back to it, there are, there is a, a lack of confidence here, and there's like you said, there's no John Terry on the pitch to kind of literally grab people by the scruff of the neck and go let's sort this out there's a point where tired Grealish is going nuts at target uh, I mean, that was just yeah it was just because he could have that's a Norwich off game a... isn't it no no was it 
I thought he was a South. Oh yeah, he was the Norwich guy. Yeah. As I say, all these guys hard to do a podcast because they all just completely <laughs> merge into one. Well, let's let's yeah. Sorry, let's finish on the. No, so. But you're saying about the experience. I'm saying about putting Elmo in for that. He's one of the only ones in the squad that's been in a dogfight. Mm. I can, off the top of my head, him and Heaton are the only two I can think of that have been in a relegation dogfight. I guess maybe Greenish. Neil, maybe Neil Taylor. I mean, Greenish played virtually no part in the season we went down. But do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even the people we're bringing on on the bench, with all due respect to, to Lansbury, he's getting more minutes in the Premier League than he was in the Championship. Mm. Like we didn't need him in the Championship, but yet we seem to be calling on him in in the Premier League. And I don't dispute that it's hard to like keep coming in in the cold, play ten minutes here and there, and then start a game. It it, it definitely is, but we're. We're calling up. We're just calling upon people who haven't been there at this level. The, the players we bought in the summer in the main haven't pl- even played in the country before. Mm. You're then calling on people like like Lansbury, like Hotter, who haven't really played in the Premier League b- before at any stage in their career as mm. well. Lansbury's obviously been around the club for a bit, but do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Elmo's like the one that you can bring in, mm. and that isn't a great situation to be. His target target must have been around the relegation he scrap. Play, he hasn't played much for, South, yeah, for Southampton. And Bertrand's been their left back for yeah. the last four or five years. Yeah, that's true. It's yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a worry. It's a deep concern, and we'll, we'll come on to the fixtures that we've got in January. There's a lot of them, and uh, and it's a worrying time. So, I mean, Southampton could go four or five. Oh, it could have here. been an unbelievable you know, score. It could have been. It could have been a hor- horrendous. I mean, it was horrendous. Though. It could have been even worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Redmond breezes past uh, past Engels. I think it is slaps it into the side netting. He and made a lot of saves in. in that game. Yeah, Hjoiberg, um Again, they're, they're three on two right at the end of the game. He lays it off to Ings, I think it is, and then Hjoiberg puts the rebound over the bar. Um, Villa have a couple of chances. Codger picks it up, gets a corner. Nothing comes from. The corner. Oh no, that, that's the Grealish goal yeah. that comes from the corner. I'm, uh, I it's mean, all, it's something all did come, but essentially it was pointless. It's a good finish by Grealish, and he's kind goal. of robbed of a celebration there. Um, but again, I think Grealish is our top goal scorer now with five. Um, that's, the Premier League certainly is. Yeah, yeah that's that's concerning. Um, and it's just. I a, feel sorry for him. Is there anything else you can say from being at the game? I mean, obviously the atmosphere must. Wasn't that was bad? Booing at the end, but it wasn't. It would, be, it would be what I would describe as reasonable booing <laughs> at, the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the game. It wasn't good. Yeah. It wasn't good. You can't you can't dress it up, can you, if, if, if it's no good. It was a pr- pretty lifeless display mm. f- from Villa, but obviously they had a chance to put it right in the next game, and, that, and they did, but again, it wasn't convincing. Yeah, well, let's talk about the next game then. Villa won Norwich nil on Boxing Day. First... Um, First double for Villa over Norwich since 2013, I think right. it is. The only double I imagine we'll, we'll pick up this season as well. Yeah, well... The talk Norwich City lads were on Twitter and the Watford guy, how did we lose to Villa? Yeah. Oh, and to be honest, I can, can sympathise. It's a fair point. Norwich looked good as well yeah, in the, uh, early on in the game. They were the ones creating the chances, um, playing around. Again, this is kind of what I referred to earlier. They are playing the ball around, but without any real kind of... Um, kind of killer instinct. And they, they kind of had their chances, but... He not under a lot of pressure no. early on, but they did control the ball. What I will say about that day is, I think Hawes and Conser really stepped up. Right, it was a must-win game, and they really stepped up. Hawes, in particular, towards the end of the game, was heading heading away everything, and I thought it was a real leadership performance from him, from Hawes. I think I think he stepped up really when he when we needed him, and he and he deserves a lot of credit for how he played in 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 that game. And that's what I'm saying. Like you got people, Hawes and Conser as the centre half pair in that game. Maybe five Premier League stars between them at that mm. at that point. It's it's tough tough out there. It's going to be tough out there for the players as well. The atmosphere is starting to turn a little bit, and we've talked about before. The Villa Park can become a hard place for pl- players to play. I mean, Vicarage Road obviously was a hard place <laughs> for the players to play as well. But you know what I'm saying? The centre back pairing's got five Premier League appearances. I guess it might not even be that many mm. between them. It's it's going to they're going to find it tough out there. I mean, I suppose Norwich are in the same boat. There won't be much Premier League experience in there. So I did, but like you say, at least you could see some progressiveness in what they were doing. Like they'd stuck to, they've got a way of playing, and they they executed what their manager would have wanted them to do. They just lost one nil. Yeah. On yeah. another day, they would have scored in the first half, and it would have been like the Southampton game. I think Norwich fans will look at this and go. Well, I mean, they lost the game, so ultimately they'll look at this and, and think it's another three points blown. But they, Norwich have been decimated by injuries all season. And they'll probably look at Villa and go, well, this is a taste of what we've been going through all season. I, I, I feel a bit sorry for Norwich. I mean, not as much as I'd like them to go down rather than us. But they, 
really haven't had a fair shot at it, no. considering that Farker played really nice football in the championship. I mean, they're all they're all going for glory, and their, their kind of strategy in the championship was... They're prepared for, to go down. Yeah, their, their strategy was, if you score three, we're going to score four, and you can't do that in the Premier League. But they never really had the chance, because they constantly had injuries. I think they had eight players out at one point. And, you know, that's... That's tough for for a for a new team and a young team and especially a team that has spent no money. And now Villa are kind of doing that themselves. They've spent a lot of money, but the the, the lack of experience and the experienced players being out is now causing causing a bit of grief. Probably the two least streetwise teams in the league. Yeah. Probably throw Southampton in, in there as well, although they obviously didn't look like that against Villa. But yeah, I think that's a fair point. Quite naive, quite naive. Yeah, well, let, so, let, let's say. And what but, but Norwich go down, mate? It doesn't matter. They'll go straight back up because they'll keep that same squad together yeah. and they'll run right in the championship. Again. Was, yeah, to your point on on naivety, you know, you've got Watford who looked very naive, and now they've brought in Nigel Pearson, who's a canny. Wise all he's, of a, sudden. he's a canny operator, and and they've, they've got they've got decent people to to, to bring in people like Decore, Kapua, Dini, decent players. They've still got. Lots of cleverly to, to come back. I think they're ba- I think their defence. I mean, again, embarrassing. We've not scored against them. I think their defence is poor. Delafeo is a very good player. I, I He's think way better than Watford. I think way better. I think Pop, Pop Pearson's getting them playing. I think you're being kind on that team. It's, it's an all right team, but mm. Watford on their day, um, Villa on their day should be beating. Should be competing with Watford. Oh, we should be com- with ten men. I mean, we should definitely be competing. Oh, with them, but should goodness. we? Be, should we be beating them? We shouldn't be beating them by the. I don't know if I don't ever said it on the podcast, but I've definitely said it to you in person or on WhatsApp. I said to you, Watford will have picked up by the time we play them, and there's exactly what. But happened. that's a Pearson factor, not a quality factor. Do you think? I think they're in a, in a false position. I think their team is better than bottom three. Right. I think they've got honestly, Delafayo is so good, such a good player. He's probably a bit frustrating at times, but. Look how direct he is on the wing. Look at how much he made happen. Mm. I thought it's just we've not got that on the wings. Saar played well as well. Yeah, so he's a twenty million pound player that, that they bought who's still mm. s- still settling in. Dini isn't even fit and he's scoring two goals, but he knows where the goal is. He knows where we how don't, to wind up. We don't know where the goal well. is yeah. at the moment. Decore and Capu are decent Premier League players. As I say, I think it's the back four where their problems are. Ben Foster's a good goalkeeper. Good goalkeeper. I think I, they won't go down. Well, let's move back to Norwich yeah, again. And Norwich have have these chances. Puki um, Puki has an opportunity. Gets behind the centre backs, but can't can't finish. Could we uh, defended well. We uh, defended well in that game. We uh, kept concentration. I don't know. He gets behind the back four, and he's just not got quite enough to finish it. They hit the bar, which could sneak in on another day. There's another chance later on where Puki should square it to Tetti. And doesn't. He's a bit selfish there. But if he passes that to Tetti, I think they score from that. And uh, I think Norwich should be taking the lead in that game. The midfield was awful that day. Mm. Awful Villa defensively. They were just, we just didn't get, well, defense and going forwards. Yep. We just didn't get a foothold in the game at all. It was, the midfield was Jack playing on his own in the, in the first half. He had no one to, to link up with. And it was very, very frustrating. You want to make your case for Douglas Lewis? <laughs> My tweet was harsh, and I, the people that criticised me, I look back on that tweet now and I say, that was worded, not not great. That, that didn't come across well, and I don't usually atta- attack players. He just frustrates me. because he One, because I, d- I don't see him getting a hard time, really, compared to compared to other players. Mm. Louise, so, Louise is a great footballer. I'm not saying that. He's a lovely footballer. Obviously, Pep rates him highly. Pep Guardiola knows more about football than, than I do. Had. You, you stick Louise in at Man City, mm. he'll look very good. Because they dominate games, they have a lot of the ball. He won't have to do much defensive side. He's mainly playing for Villa, and this isn't his fault. But he's mainly playing as Villa as the deepest, deepest midfield. Occasionally, Nakamba and, and him will both play, and in that case, he's not. Mm-hmm. But mainly, he's playing as the deepest midfielder. And when he plays there, people just just walk past him. When we're coming forward, he's like Usain Bolt. He's, he's quick. He's got to turn the pace. When we're going backwards. It's like he's running through treacle. Mm. He, he doesn't. He doesn't get back. And I just think in that Nor- in that Norwich game, although Nakamba was the one that was playing deep, I felt like the Norwich midfielder was just moving away from him too easily. He wasn't wasn't tracking his man. And he'll go on and he'll be a great footballer. But what I'm what I'm saying is at the moment, Villa aren't Man City, mm. and I feel at times we we're carrying him. I think in midfield because he doesn't do the dirty work, and that's that's what what I'm saying. And other big Villa midfielders have been get criticised for not doing the dirt day work at times as well and I think that that's probably fair but I, I don't see what Louise is offering us at the moment it was probably about 50-50 after my, after my tweet mm. 
I th- well, I think I think we've seen two sides of Douglas Louise, and and you kind of take which one you want. You see the side where Traore at Wolves absolutely blows past him. His to, decision to making isn't good, and, but but he he wasn't. But he's a young player. Well, he wasn't there for the fight in that game. He, he he kind of just let it go by, and and it was awful. Really, he like you say, he wasn't kind of tracking back. He's fast, but he wasn't he wasn't aware. He didn't perceive how easy that would be. But then on the other side, you've seen him play the ball you've seen him smash it into the back of the net you've seen some really nice stuff from Douglas Lewis we're just not seeing the whole package right now and I think that to your point is in a Man City side he can get away with that because there are players that can cover around him or or maybe he works harder he won't have to do as much defensive work at the moment it's like a a siege against Mm. us at the moment whenever we play and that's not his fault Mm. but when he's playing as the deepest line midfielder I always look at him I've said about Wesley attacking he's never where I think he should be Mm. It's a bit the same with Louise defensively. I look on the pitch and I think, oh, he's just n- nowhere near where he should be. There was a there was a point in that game where he could have just laid off a simple a simple pass. Instead, he tried to flick it to someone and he lost the ball. Mm. And it's it's those little things that cost you. He's give away a penalty. He, yeah, well, oh, I think it was a bit harsh, but he's give away a penalty I've, needless. I've got no problems with that penalty. He doesn't get anywhere near the ball. He bumps no. into D- Dina goes down soft. But if that's Jack, then that's a penalty. I think the other side it's a penalty as well. Um, but He's not the only one giving the ball away. No, 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 no. We, we mean, are our ball, ball retention is horrific. So, uh, what's your what's your top six then? Because because we talk about the midfield and where where does Jack play? Who do you play in that midfield three and then uh, then the forward three as well? How does that how does that look without McGinn? I really don't know, mate. Because I think that's the point. If who's better than Douglas Lewis? Because Nakamba's not playing better than Douglas. I don't Lewis. think you can play those two at the same time, and I think that's happening a lot at the moment. Nakamba and Lewis. I think Nakamba looks scared. I mean, fair play to Luiz, actually. I give him some credit because I don't think he's playing the best at the moment. He doesn't. He's not hot. He doesn't hide. Mm. So that will give. I will give him credit for that, Luiz. And as I say, I do think he will go. He's going to play for Brazil. He's he's a good player. I'm not saying he isn't a good player. I'm just saying I think he exposes us a, li- a little bit at, at the moment. I don't. <laughs> I need no. With those two, with those two, I think it's a fifty-fifty split of who plays right. as the defensive midfielder. I, I think. Connor came on in that game and linked up with Jack, scored the winner. Mm-hmm. I think he has to be in the, in the best team at the moment. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree with him. So it's a toss-up between Louise and Nakamba. Connor there. I think you've got to be putting Jack back in the middle now. I think he was playing well. I think he was playing well on the wing, but again, I think he only plays well on the wing when when Horahan plays and when Target plays better. And when Target, yeah, Target needs a bit of protection at the moment on the mm-hmm. left-hand side as well. Someone that's going to stick in a position and trap back, and that isn't that isn't Jack. That's mm-hmm. not not his game. But then who I protects think de- him? I think we desperately need some, a couple of new players. Yeah, Desperately need, need some. I'm not his biggest fan again, Codger, but I think he can look back and say, feel hard done by in the last few games, not to have got more football. Yeah, totally. At least on at least on a game on, on the wing. Oof. I think Al Ghazi's had a... Re- I like Al Ghazi and I rate Al Ghazi, but I think he's had a really bad month. Yeah. Everything he's doing at the moment is incorrect. And it, I mean, it's, it's, it's all around the park, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, no one's played it's, well against Watford. I, I think this is the problem that I'm trying to get to here in, in is that... You're not necessarily wrong about Douglas Louise, but what do you do instead? No, because there, there, there does seem to be a lack of options here. And you, we we get criticised for, for our favouritism, bias, whatever you want to call it, on, on Conor Harahan. But you, he's the one creating chances, scoring goals. I don't really see how you can argue with that when... We need goals at the moment. And him, and Gre- him and Grealish are the only ones putting the ball in the back of the net in the Premier League. There's nobody that... If you take Harahan out of that midfield three... It doesn't make the 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 kind of defensive side of our midfield any more secure. You know, we, we're not looking like a fortress without him. No. And with him, we're creating more chances. To me, no. that's there's a and no-brainer. He has, he has bad games, of course. He had bad games. Yeah. He got dragged against Southampton. He wasn't pla- wasn't playing well. Yeah. I, I completely get that. And then the same thing happened to Nakamba in the Norwich game, and Connor comes on yeah. and scores. The the thing that I always find strange that gets levelled at Connor is they say he can't play in certain games because he's not strong enough defensively. But when he's when he's not there, the midfield's getting walked through the exact same way as when as when when he is there. But at least he pops up with a goal or an assist, and he's dangerous from dead balls. Oh, so that's the point that I'm trying to make. It also comes back to you talk about we don't we don't have anyone that holds the ball up or we don't create things. I think when when Connor's there, there's a bit of a spark. There's... Jack had someone to play with in that second half against Norwich, and he didn't have that in the first half. Yeah. Those two linked up for the goal, didn't they? No. As soon as Connor came on, Jack lit up a little bit and, yeah. and took the game by the scruff of the net because, because he could. Mm-hmm. He couldn't do that in the first half because he had no one to pass to. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've got problems, don't get me wrong. I yeah. mean, realistically, 
We've got Louise from, from Man City. He's probably quite low down on the list of problems, but the, mid, the midfield is a problem in general, I think. The attack is a problem in general, and the defences as well. Mm-hmm. The only position at the moment you can say is working well is the goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got a bunch of notes from this this Norwich game. Um, uh, Max Aaron's looked lively. I thought I, I spoke speaking to my mate Ollie, who's a, who's a big Norwich fan. He said Max Aaron's has been a bit off the boil, but I thought really well was good. Really came back a bit obnoxious. Let's say I felt like Cantwell was the was Norwich's Grealish, not as good as Grealish, but in the referee's ear a lot. He's a nice player. He floats around well from that left hand side. He is very reminiscent of, of Jack actually. Yeah. I think they're a bit they're slightly different. I think Cantwell's more about getting in the box. It was more to me about. He was in the referee's ear a lot. He was trying to look for those fouls, as Grealish does. Um, But I can see why opposition fans get annoyed with Grealish doing that, because every time I felt like Cantwell was in the referee's ear. It got a bit frustrating for me. um, I've just got loads of notes here of of, of Norwich. You've just got loads of notes. Of Norwich having chances. I've got uh, Wesley links well with with Trezeguet to Hurahan. I I, I wanted to praise Wesley because there was a couple of nice moments. I thought he did well against Norwich. In in that game. But I'm saying he did well, but realistically it's the basics. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. What's the the baseline for for Wesley doing well? I think that's the the, the point we always come back to. I don't want to dwell on that. But... um, Hurahan, Harahan grabs the goal. I mean, we've called him every now and then. Harahan grabs the goal. It's nice link up. It's a really play. nice goal. Um, and you could see what it means to him as well, Connor. He, he he scores the goal. Again, I don't want to talk too much about it because we're, we're always biased, apparently. But it finishes it well, does, does it well, and, and ultimately it's a huge win. First win is six, I think, for Villa. Yeah, well, we need we des- desperately needed it. If you don't, if you lose to Norwich, mm. it's hard to see a way back back for us. But yeah, there, there should be a special praise reserved for for Heaton, who makes a couple of great saves in in that game, keeps us in it literally, yeah, and Douglas Louise Louise's as well. Block. Yeah, I, with the block. I, I'm not going to sit here and not praise Douglas Louise's block. It was a, it was a really really good block. And to be fair, that goes against everything I've just said. But I'm not seeing that in other aspects of the game because his positional sense there was excellent. Yeah. He spotted the danger and he put himself in the right place. It was an excellent clearance. As I say, my tweet initially came across way more harshly than I meant it to. The wording wasn't good, mm. so I can understand why I got stick for that. So Villa win that game, and and so it's, it's one loss, one win in this in this kind of crucial relegation round robin. Um, and and the mood Villa Park leaving leaving that game. How Relief. Do you feel? Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what about Notford? Well, Notford. Notford. Watford. <laughs> That's quite a good name <laughs> yeah. of the podcast. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> um, what um, what are you feeling? Because I mean, it's not a convincing performance by any stretch. You're now looking at Vicarage no, well, Road and going, I don't know what to do. What well, to make of this? I, bit, I usually give Rollo a call on my way back to to London, and I gave Rollo a call, and we spoke obviously spoke about the game on on Boxing Day, and we were saying. How much confidence can you take from a 1 0 like that? Mm. And I thought, I don't reckon we'll have taken much away from that because it was just so scrappy. It wasn't like we played well. And it seems like I was correct because mm. Watford, it looked more of the same. I thought, I, although I did think the team selection was a little bit str- off. Mm. What I will say about the Norwich game is I took my mate's kid. Oh yeah, for the for the first time that was a nice that was a nice moment. He loved it being in the in the whole end, like lifting him up when when we scored. It was nice for him to see. To see a win, he, although he did spend the whole game asking me about Jack Grealish. Did he? The kids just love Jack, don't they? They do. Yeah, he's, he's five, six years old, and all he wanted to know was was about Jack Grealish. There's been a few questions on Twitter about whether Jack Grealish should still be captain of, course he of the team, and I don't really understand where that's coming from. I don't know if it's kind of a an of a, a old school kind of fans' opinion that the captain should be the one that's chucking in the tackles and leading from centre back, or you know, you, you've got Mings, you've got Heaton who's playing well. Like you said earlier, Grealish is leading by example. He's been directly involved in ten goals. He's taking the games by the scruff of the neck. That's the captain's man. And he's the one that's that's. If, if ever we're looking like we're going to score, he's involved in some capacity. Yeah. If God help us if he gets injured. Yeah. At any point, there's. I mean, there's some quite dark games currently with him in the side, but it'll get even darker if he's not. If he's not there, I always say, someone like Heaton or Mings. I used to say the same about Yednak and Whelan. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to them whether they're wearing the armband. They'll re- they'll play and they'll act in exactly the same manner. The captaincy having the armband on for jacket means a lot to him. Mm. It potentially takes his game up a few levels. He likes the responsibility and thrives off being being the leader and the one the players the players look to and the one that they they give the ball to. Whenever anyone picks the ball up, they're looking for Jack. Mm. So uh, I think again, there's a, there's a long list of problems at Villa at the moment, but. Who's wearing the armband really doesn't. That's not a big deal. Jared Liston in the question says, 
uh, do you think this is Jack's last season, regardless of whether we stay up or not? If we stay up, I think he'll stay. Do you? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's no insider knowledge there. No. That's just what, what I think. The way I see it is he's doing enough to be in the England squad at the moment. Mm. What he is doing, for me, shows that he should be in the England team. Not even the England squad, the England team. Yeah, he's still he's, not, though. He's one of a kind. No, he's not, but I think he will. I think he'll get the call up right. in the next round of friendlies. I think he'll be, as long as he's fit. What, in February, March? Yeah, he'll, I think he'll be, in, he'll be in the squad and they'll be, they'll be having a, a look at him. If he then doesn't get in the Euro squad and Villa go down, or if he does get in the Euro squad and Villa go down, if Villa go down, he's gone because hmm. he needs to be playing in the Premier League. Yeah. If we stay up, and whether he makes the Euros or not, I think he stays at Villa one more year. I think if he hasn't then made the Euro squad and he gets to the next World Cup... I think he's then starting to think, I need to be playing at a top team to make sure I'm in the World Cup squad for England. It reminds me a bit of uh, a bit of a throwback reference, Alan Smith at, at Leeds, where Leeds are, have this quality side and, and they, for whatever reason, they, they're, they're falling down the, the league and Alan Smith gets made captain, then they get relegated. And you see Alan Smith on the last day of the season, he's in tears and he says he won't get, he won't leave and all this kind of stuff. And then he ends up going to Manchester United. Which arch rivals. Arch rivals. But... I, to me, I don't. I, if I remember rightly, I don't think he had much of a choice. If he either he Leeds had to sell him, I think because they were in financial. And that's mess. how pretty much everyone who was they worth did. anything at that point. Yeah, and it was it was a massive downfall. But to me, it, it was like Leeds, uh, Smith wanted to be there. He, he was desperate to be there, but ultimately he had to leave. And to me, I, I think a, a particular. I mean, if he if if Villa go down, then I can't see Grealish staying. Why Why would he? Well, we'll have to sell him. Yeah, and but I I still I kind of feel like if if we stay up. He's he's done so much for this club already, but he's, he must have ambitions that are beyond playing and captaining his boyhood club. I don't know him at all. Maybe maybe you could. I think have if a Villa are uh, in the position they were in the Martin O'Neill days, challenging for the top four and finishing in the top six consistently, I think you've got Jack Grealish there for a long time. Completely different. Yeah, we're not going to get to that and he's such a good footballer he owes it to himself to play at the highest level he possibly can exactly and I don't begrudge him that Yeah, he's been here a lot longer than I thought he would be I thought the season we didn't go up and I mean I know how close he was to joining Spurs as well he, he was close mm. so he would have gone I'm surprised we've we've managed to hold on to him this long because he's an ex, he's an exceptional talent mm. I remember it, uh, I mean Villa View throwback yeah, because it's off. Did we mention it's the fourth birthday? No. Of the, it's the fourth birthday of the Villa View. Very happy birthday. T- today. Hang on, today, actually. I remember in one of the early shows that we did in the first season of the Championship saying that Jack Grealish will go on and be one of the best players in the Championship. And I remember taking quite a lot of stick at that point. People were like, what's he going on about? He's talking, talking rubbish. That's never never going to happen. And it did. Even a stop clock's right twice a day. Exactly. <laughs> I, ju- I just genuinely think he's an elite footballer. Yeah. We have got an elite footballer here at a time when we are not an elite club. You sound like you've changed your opinion, though. There from, what do you mean? Well, because you just said if, if we were challenging for top four, top six, then he'd stay. Yeah. But if you, if we're not and we won't be, then he should go and further his ambition. I thought you talked about this summer. Yeah, I am talking about this summer. So if we stay up but at eventually, 17... That, I'm saying... Ve- yeah, we stay, I think we stay up, he's here next season. But you think... Eventually, then, then though, we'll, he will go to an elite club. But surely, like, that's just... I, I, what I'm getting at is if if we finish 17th this season, I really hope we do, it's not like we're going to jump next season to, to be well, challenging for fourth or sixth. You don't know that. But you think we will be? Leicester finished 16th, 17th one season, didn't they? They won the league the next season. I'm not saying that's going to happen. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but okay. There's, Villa have got... I mean, it's probably a good time to wait Dane Smith's future. Villa have got, I believe, a, a, a long-term plan that involves Dean Smith staying here. Yeah. For a long time, if we if we go down, is that factored in? I don't know, but I think from the board's point of view, I think they think Jack Grealish is factored into to that right. plan as well. I think, I think if we go down, there's no way we, we, we keep on keep we keep Jack. I just mm. don't don't see how it, how it's possible. But I've completely got lost lost what we're talking about. Well, here. let's talk about Dean Smith's yeah. future. D, D, uh, Nick D, we were promised exciting football by Perslow, which has disappeared over the last few weeks. How long has Smith got if he can't get performance out of this team? He's recently signed a new contract. He's favourite to be sacked. He's, he's two to one at the moment. Um, Daniel Farker second and Eddie Howe third. I mean, the way the results are going, he's probably rightly the fa- the favourite. But I, I personally can't see them sacking him because mm. I think if we go, if we sack him, who who do you get? People talk about Pochettino and Allegra, Draymond man. Yeah, I'm not going to get. 
I'm going to come to Villa. Allardyce. I mean, I think Everton are lucky to get Angel after. Yeah, I, I agree with Villa's that. That's a great appointment. Oh, that's the best. There's like levels that you can hope for, yeah. and then there's them getting Angelotti yeah. above that, and I think they should be delighted with, with what they've done. So West Ham have sat Pellegrino oh. and just got back Moyes, yeah. who they've had there before, who they didn't want permanently after he kept them up because yeah, it, because it's was boring. Harsh. If we if we get rid of Smith, it's going to be Allardyce, yeah, it is, someone like that. I just, I just can't. St- I know it's wrong, but I can't stomach that. I would back him if he was to get the job, for example, but I don't want Villa to be. That kind of short-termist club again. Mm. I want us to be long-term. And if we go down, I'd be confident Dean Smith would get us back up. But you, people are like kind of saying to me, oh, you've got to make a choice between Grealish and Smith. And and, and may, may, maybe I do, I don't know. But, but you, there's no guarantee on in either of those sides, is there? No. I, I think you just put the point that I was going to make across. I, I still have the faith in Smith that if we... And we said this at the start of the season, if we go down... We should retain Smith. Yeah, because, and I don't want to. I, I don't. Yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to move away from that. I'm not. He will have given the okay for all the signings, but I'm not convinced they're all his men. There's there was so much chat in the summer about how Smith was building a new philosophy, a new style of football, and and fair play, there are questions about what that philosophy is at the moment, and I think that's fair to ask. But all of the all of the fans that were saying we were 100 percent behind Smith. Where where are you going? If if you're the I ones, mean, you can change your mind. You can change your mind for sure, but. You well, you can and you can't a little bit in that I won't change mine. If you you knew that this season was going to be hard, you, you it wasn't going to be a walk in the park. There are, that we should be getting better results. I've been I've been the first to criticise on this podcast, looking at some of the results where we should have got and and we let them slip away. Dean Smith was that close to them, but there were many many. Or like the majority of the fan base, I think, would have said, "Look, even if it's a tough season, we keep hold of Smith, and we build again with him." Now it seems to be on the turn where it's like, "Well, how many games has Smith got left? What Smith doing? Why are we? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that?" Maybe Smith should go, and it feels like maybe that's a social media thing. Maybe that's not the way it's it feels at Villa Park. But I've got to say, at Villa Park, I've not really heard anything too anti-Smith. Right. Well, then good. But I mean, I don't know what it was like in the away end. And like, I watched the ninety minutes live, but I don't know what it was like in the. That's, that's a good game. I asked, I asked Aston, and he said, oh, "I walked out when it went to three. I'm, right. not, I'm not watching that." Right. Well, Fair that, enough. And then and you travelled a long way to watch that game. Totally. But I don't know what I don't know what the atmosphere was like on, on the game against. Watford. He's obviously favourite to to get sacked for a reason. Bookies don't chuck their money away generally. Um, so again, you, you're totally right to to change your mind. You do do whatever you want, but I, I just want to kind of highlight the short term. Memory I mean, of, you of think some fans. In some, I mean, I don't dispute that it's bad at the moment. I don't dispute that serious questions need to be asked about things. Of course, they do. We're we're getting worse mm-hmm. at this current time, but at the moment, we're not cut adrift. No. In some ways, people will say, "Well, that's the time to act." Then before we do get cut adrift, he's just signed a new contract. I don't think for any minute that the board factored in that this was going to happen when they gave him the new contract. I don't think they envisage this run of results yeah. and this run of performances. He got the new contract straight after the Newcastle game, didn't he? But they, well, I think like, we can agree we we all thought we were in a good place but, at that point. But let's not think that the board is is completely naive. They, no, they, I don't think that. No, but they will have known that you give Dean Smith a new four year contract. There's a chance that Villa still go down. Yeah, they knew they would have known that. So, so that's that's. But I don't that think that, I don't it. think they'd have factored in the, the manner of the displays recently. That's no that's chance. Fairer. They wouldn't have thought, oh, we're going to get. Pump three one at Southampton at Villa Park. We're going to lose to ten man Watford three nil. The the biggest concern for me is, and again, I've talked about this on the podcast before. The transfer strategy, to me, fell short of the mark in in the summer. We missed out on a striker um, slash winger, and the worrying thing for me is that apparently it sounds like we don't have the the funds or we don't have the capacity well, to pick I think one of those up we need to believe, otherwise we will go down i believe it'll change now because i think it it, i think to. it has to although i'm saying we're heavily linked with glenn i think it's glenn kamara from rangers yesterday and I just we need more than that mm. that, that isn't going to make it that isn't going to help us. rangers is the only place we're scouting morellas I, I, and i'm mean, uh, pretty sure i don't even know how many games glenn kamara plays for rangers but apparently he's very inconsistent that, that's not what we need i've got a friend actually who is a big rangers fan former rangers season ticket holder and he Reckons that Kamara is a better goal scorer in terms of the midfielder, though, isn't it? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But he, he'll offer us something different than than we have. I was going to go on to Morelos, and lots of people say Morelos is the answer as well. And again, it's a bit unproven, isn't it? You, you know, you take McGinn, we won't sign Morelos, and he's he's, he's fit. It's why? Because he plays Europa League already, I and just, he's happy there. I just don't think we'll sign. 
All right. I think it'll be two, 20 million, and I don't think we'll spend that. We have to. I don't think we will. We've already spent 20 million on a striker that, that doesn't score very many goals. We need to we need to invest in and a striker. How many times has sent off? Yeah, I, I don't agree that he's the answer, but I, I definitely think we need to spend 20 million on a striker. Who do you get for under 20 million that's going to score? You can get anything, and I think we'll struggle. I, think we'll, we'll, I, think, I don't know what we're going to do. Where's... A question should be asked here of where where is the money? Well, Why don't we have we any money? We spent 120 of it, million of it in the summer. But this is an investment to stay up again, and it's so it's a gamble, though, isn't it? Yeah. I just don't think I don't think with the financial fair play stuff as well that's come out in the last few years. I don't think we're in a position we to, look to do at massive that. business. But we were told that there won't be massive money spent in the summer a few weeks ago, and I think that potentially change a little bit now because I think we're in the doodah. Yeah. So I think there will be money spent, but I don't envision just spending twenty million on a striker. I think if I think if we don't then we're writing our own we're writing our own ticket to the championship. I think if we spend twenty million on a striker it's gonna be someone from abroad. And that's not I don't think that's what we need unproven. We need proven at the moment. We've signed a lot of unproven players who's, in the who's summer. a proven available striker? I mean there isn't enough. This and this is the problem. Oh. And January is notoriously hard to do business. And especially when you're a club that's in the relegation zone and people know that, that you're struggling. The problem is as well, in the ch- we're str- we were struggling in the Championship, weren't we? And we utilised January to get some better players in on loan and move us up the league. And eventually that got us promoted. People like Mings. You go and get Mings from Bournemouth on loan. And it's an inspired signing. In the Premier League, you can't go and get a Premier League player on loan because most teams are worried about relegation outside of the top eight or nine. Mm. Let's just, I'm using it as a hypothetical with Benteke. Let's say we want Benteke on loan. I can see the comments being written here. No, I'm not saying we're going to do that. And I'm not saying we should We should do that. I'm yeah. just saying let's say that we do. Palace aren't going to give us Benteke on loan mm. because they'll be thinking in the back of their mind, oh, well, what if we get sucked in? And then Benteke scores the goals that get Villa move Villa up the league and we go down instead of them. Yep. So it's hard. Unless you're getting players from Man City, like, like we have done, mm. and to Chelsea teams like that, Think Jesus is available? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, not. People talk about Giroud and Bashwoye. Yeah. I don't think they're going to fancy a massive relegation scrap with Villa. They could again. Palace probably want a striker. They'd probably rather go there, stay in London, mm. not move house. Think things like that. You then, if you, the only one I can think of is the guy who's at Leeds. N- N- I can't even say his name. Nemecha. Right. He's from Man City on loan. He's been doing well then. I'm not sure he starts every every week for Leeds at the moment. If they cancel his loan a little bit like what nearly happened with us in Tamme right. and we can get him in why would they do that so he can play Premier League football and get Premier seems, League experience instead seems, of Championship Tamme was close to going to Wolves yeah last, last summer I'm disappearing off the screen as I said I would in a, I even gave in, you extra room in a slump <laughs> I just think it's going to be so hard in January and if no disrespect to Glenn Kamara but if that's the best kind of thing we can come up with then I don't see that making a massive difference what you need is a striker that's going to get hot that's what we need, and a Premier League. I mean, it's a, it's a tough place to play. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, th- th- this is bleak. It's a bleak podcast, and we haven't got in onto the Watford game yet. It gets even bleaker, and we've only got a few minutes left. Iganacho would have been one potentially, but he's kind of got himself back in the frame again at, Le- at Leicester. I think yeah. he was being pushed at Villa quite heavily earlier on in the in the early months when he wasn't getting a game at all for Leicester but now he's getting games he's going to be happy Harry Wilson's a lovely signing you look at those kind Harry of Harry Wilson uh, Bournemouth Callum Wilson Callum Harry Wilson, Wilson. Um, yeah, we're not going to get him are no we? no but you look at him in the summer and where, where there was, there yeah, was they availability would have, they would have cost of 60-70 million no but I mean he's on loan right you're talking about Harry Wilson you're getting your Wilsons confused Harry Wilson's That's what I said, the though. winger who was at Derby last season from yeah. Liverpool where is he, he said Harry originally. Yeah. We need a striker. He's not a striker. Well, yeah, but we need we need could do some goals on that wall. Don't get me don't get me wrong. He's scoring goals. That, that's well, that's that's kind of played much, but when he has played, generally he scored. Yeah. <sighs> right. Okay. Let's move on because I, I, I think we're I, getting ourselves in a tizz here. I think next week we need to talk about the transfer situation. Let's let's yeah. have a good chat about that. Yeah, we've, we've got, got to more, go more time. You go back and look at our business now, and as I say at the screen at the time we, at the time we were quite quite giddy with it because yeah. we were spending money. And we we're getting players that we thought were going to be exciting, but at the moment it's kind of mirroring the season we went down. Yeah. Although I think it was the British players that we bought in that were the problem when we went down last time. Yeah. The lads that we that we've bought in they might turn out to be fantastic players, but at the moment like, there's a reluctance to play Trezeguet at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. From, from from Smith. You kind of feel like they're not quite there, and 
we haven't got the time for them to, to, to get there and, and potter through games. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about Watford then. Troy Deeney scores a fairly simple goal for me. Um, you know, again, we're, we're not we're not tracking back. We're not just that sharpness. It's fairly similar to the Southampton goal, similar isn't it? Similar to the Southampton goal. We're not the first of the loose ball. Very frustrating. I, I, to be, if we're going to criticise Heaton at all, and you've said many a time, he's definitely the least he's of our problems. List. He's on the list with the he, captaincy as the list of problems. To, to, to me, he doesn't quite push the ball far enough away. It, it seems like he saves it, but I... I I think he could do more. Okay, it's soft. I'm, I'm clutching at straws here, but we're not reactive. Deeney absolutely loves scoring against the Villa, doesn't he? He blame it. He gives it a big... I don't know if you've seen it back, but he gives the, the Villa fans one of these. Of course and he does. And a little word. I'm, I'm not blaming him no. at all. Um, Wesley has a chance earlier on. You know, it's, it's, a, score. it's a beautiful ball by Harahan. and score. Uh, it's a good save. It's, it's a good save, but it's he doesn't do to enough to, to put it past him. He almost looks surprised as well when he's missed. I as agree. If to say, what do I have to do? Because he's put it in the corner. He's already like that. Yeah, he should score that. Yeah, I it's agree. a different game if that goes in as well because their confidence will start to sap there down the bottom. Instead, we've gone one 0 down. And it's our confidence that saps. Yeah, I, I've I've written just here in capitals. We miss the old Mings. You know, the Mings before. Before his England call, I'm not saying anything to do with the England call. Miss Ming's full stop. We miss Ming's full stop, but we miss his commanding presence, his comfortability on the ball, uh, his uh, just general all round. We need demeanor. some of his aura mm. around the rest of the team. Tyro Ming's always just looks confident. I think and he'll make a mistake, but he'll he still look still look confident and carry himself the way I would, I'd like players to carry themselves. That, that's not there. That was highlighted later on where, where Courtney Hawes gets absolutely pickpocketed. Again, I think it's by Mings. He's bringing it out from the back and he's just dallying on the ball and Dean just runs around, knocks him back, gets the ball to Decoye, I think, and uh, Decoye has a shot, it's deflected over for a corner, whatever. But again, it just felt like we're just that little bit off the pace. Well, we are. That's because we, just because we are off the yeah. pace. At the moment, in, in every sense you can look at around the pitch, we're off the pace. Oh, the, I mean, I've, I've kind of missed... Uh, you know, we talk about being off the pace. Conser clearance for, for the first goal as well. This, I mean, this is a complete ramble at this stage, but it's because there are so I'm many negative honest, things I've, to talk I've about. I've become so upset as we've gone on and done this bugger. <laughs> Conser there, he's tried to clear his line, so in a sense he's done the right thing, but it's just an aimless hoof that's, mm. that could go anywhere. But unfortunately, when you the chips are down, what happens, happens, and that it ends up in the, in the, in the back of the net. But it's that decision-making again. Yeah, second half, Mariapa gets sent off. Um, it's still one nil at this point. I think yeah. two two bookings. I don't really think anyone can have a, an argument. There's you you watch. We saw it come in, hasn't it? He de- he definitely looked at it, but but Mariapa's jumped in there, and I think Lansbury bought it a little bit, but I think it's, it's a foul. foul. I think it's, it's a foul, and and to be so quick with the other but one, and as soon as the turn goes down to ten men, I'm not thinking. Right here we go. I'm thinking. Oh God, here we go again because yeah. we can't beat teams with ten men. Well, not long later, Douglas Louise just has a bit of a brain fart. You and know, the targets on the floor, which doesn't help. Yeah, so so yeah, that, that's that's right. Targets laying on the floor, but Grealish chooses not to pass it out. He he looks to get on the tack. Um, I don't think we've got can have any complaints about that. No, no, that's fine. But we give the ball away. Watford boot it forward. Um, targets playing everybody on. Deeney picks it up and. Douglas Luiz just kind of barges into him. I think it's a bit soft. It is soft, but, but I think it's a penalty. Yeah, yeah he, the, Luiz need, doesn't go for the ball. It's needless. He's going nowhere. Yeah. He's going away from goal. Just shepherd, just shepherd him. Just let him go. And that's what I'm talking about with the decision making. Yeah, he's made a rash decision. He's given away a penalty, and that's game over. Yeah. Um, Dini puts it straight down the middle. Yeah, no, no, no doubt he was going to score. No problem. And then seventy minutes, captain, captain, fantastic. Jack Grealish loses the ball to Kapu. He he's complaining that it's a foul to me. I I, I think it could go either way, but I don't necessarily think it's a foul. It's, it's irrelevant on at this him. point, really. Yeah, Kapu, so bad. Kapu, Kapu, Kapu. I've, I've called him both. There's been a few <laughs> people who've had different names. Kapu picks the ball up, gives it to Dean, he gets it back, puts it across, and Saar finishes it off. You know, a nice goal, but again, we're we're at sixes and sevens. The teams are breaking against us when I'm not even thinking that we're like we're, that we're piling men forward and looking like we might score. We're getting broken against even when we don't look like we're going to score. Yeah, Villa Villa look more petulant, a bit more. Ratty, and I know that happens when you're when you're down the bottom. Jack's getting annoyed. Everybody's getting annoyed. Everyone's surrounding the referee. It feels like there's a 
a disharmony a lack of unity I don't know whether it's within the team itself but everybody's getting annoyed at the situation and we need to rectify that somehow and the only way you do that is with a win yeah I thought I've, I've meant to touch on the team selection a couple of times I think in a game a basement battle against a team that's below you in the league I was surprised to see Lansbury and Hutter start mm. I think Hutter hasn't played for months for a start he's quite lightweight probably not going to put in the shift mm. that, that you need I think Lansbury the same he plays 5-10 minutes here and there and then you can't just chuck him in from the start and expect him to be to be good the whole Midfield had a, had a bad day. So on that, uh, just on the, I just wanted to get Martin Wires and Martin Nicholas asked the same similar or similar questions. Are we sacrificing Jack Grealish by kind of playing him where we where we need him to but be? His best performances have been on the left. In fairness, I, I agree with you. I was going to say he was. That. We were saying earlier on in the season when he was playing in the midfield that we, were, I mean, we're getting overrun again now. That we were getting overrun too much and we weren't getting Grealish in the game. He was getting stifled in the middle in the middle of the park. I quite liked him against Norwich when he played as a number ten, and we tweaked the system. And it, a little bit, but then we then went back to to four three three. That I oh know Lansbury we didn't. In fact, we stuck we stuck with four two three one. But we had Lansbury in the hole hmm. as a number ten. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, Premier yeah. Premier League. If you're going to play play Connor as a ten and let him get in the box and get on the end of stuff because he's capable of doing that. Lansbury didn't really offer us much, and it's harsh to single out people on it in what is a an awful display all round. As I say, the whole midfield was was bad. The whole team was bad. I that think... day, but Smith's post match as well. Usually, I think. Oh, very honest from Smith he comes yeah. out and he tells it as it is he doesn't take us for mugs and I don't think he's trying to take us for mugs by the way I didn't really agree with much that he said I thought you were plugging the mugs in, no I didn't think I'd agree with much that he said in the post matches in saying that we were did you say we were more in the game yeah we were bet more in the game in the second half yeah and we deserved more and we, we kind of I created like things that. and it, it's just not it's not True. You I don't blaming think... the ref and blaming the, the official. The officiating was not why we lost that game. Yeah, I, I think that's totally fair to point out. We've always been praising of Smith's honesty, and now we're kind of getting sucked into it. He's not seeing the same game that we're seeing, and I don't know whether that's whether that's that's true or not. But it doesn't. I preferred it when he was honest with us, and so maybe he's just trying to lift the players' confidence. But him working. Um, no, I mean, I just can't see us getting anything against Burnley. On yeah, New Year's Day. I just don't see it. So now we've got Fulham in the cup, uh, Leicester in the cup as well. Uh, both away those games. Burnley away, then Man City at home, then Brighton away, uh, then Watford at home. So it, it's a busy January. Something has got to change. January looks a, looks a very busy month in terms of just games played. There's a couple of three cup ties in there. Burnley away, tough place to go. Man City at home, and they're exactly game. the kind of team at the moment that will relish playing against Villa. Mm-hmm get physical with us I mean Mings might be back in which case I think if Mings is back I think Hawes will probably target injured Hawes or move to left back and maybe just give us a little bit more physicality in there but but I can picture Barnes and Woods Wood now running right against us the direct football Mm. like it will just with a kind of team at the moment that will just suit Burnley down to the ground and Burnley the exact kind of team we don't really want to play so Villa drop into the bottom three uh, on 18 points with 20 games played Watford on 16 and Norwich City on 30 we've won the same amount of games as Arsenal in 12th yeah that, isn't it? Uh, West Ham had a terrible Christmas period. They, they've only played twice because the Liverpool game was rearranged, but they didn't win a game, so they're down to 17th. Uh, Bournemouth as well dropped down. They only got one point. I think we talked about... Uh, the concerning thing is as well that you feel like the other teams, they'll, they pull out freak results, the other teams. Mm. Well, right. Southampton, that 2-0 Chelsea. against Chelsea. I don't feel like we've done that this season. When, this... when have we pulled out a result that you thought, oh, that, that wasn't one I expected. I feel like I've been saying that no, for, for months. And Even Norwich getting a draw with Spurs the other day, you probably didn't see that well, coming. They should have done better, shouldn't they? Yeah. Were they 2-0 up? They were, yeah. they were winning. What? They were winning a couple of times, I think. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Like, I think Brighton have beat Spurs at home 3 0 at one, one stage. Well, you know, the other teams just they'll get Watford beat Man U, they'll just get a result that you don't really see coming. Whereas we've not had that at all and we're halfway through the season. Yeah. So we're going to have to rectify that. Yeah, we need to start picking up some points where we don't necessarily, or we don't deserve to, or we're not likely to win. And this is, again, this is what I've been saying. We've had those chances and we haven't taken them, and that's a sign of a relegation team. I mean, I'm fully behind Dean Smith, and it's important to say that all is not lost. There's still a long way a long way to go. Things can change. Remember how miserable we were this time last year, or another season in the Championship. We managed to, to put a run together and get ourselves up. We will we'll not win 10 games in a row yeah. in the Premier League, but you know what I mean. Things 
things can change. We might make a couple of inspired signings in January that drag us out of trouble. But we're one point from safety, and yeah. I know there's half a season left to go. But there's, but we are only one point from safety. The, the you can get yourself up to kind of yeah, twelfth, thirteenth with a with a couple of wins and the right results. Yeah. Um, so but we've got to start getting those wins. Exactly. It doesn't look like they're coming at the moment, and. There's a whole host of things going wrong. Yeah, and I think I think the worrying thing is that the performances aren't there. You know, when we're losing, worse. when we're losing two one to Liverpool, and you know that's a tough pill to swallow because we're one 0 up for so long. But the performance was there. There was some fighting spirit in that game. I'm not even seeing that at the exactly. moment. That's yeah. worrying. Yeah, very, very concerning. Of, in this way, there's a lot of things worrying me. And uh, yeah, it's concerning because you look at those fixtures and Fulham and Leicester. Both away are tough fixtures in the cup. It's not like we're I mean, necessarily going to get right. I would be surprised if any first-team players play against Fulham on Saturday. And then you've got Burnley away, tough game. Man City at home, tough game. Brighton away, tough game. Watford at home, also fighting for their, win. For their lives. Must win. You know, it doesn't... It's Premier League. It's, you know, welcome to the Premier League. It's 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 a tough, tough league. That no one's going to give you points. If we um, could get a surprise three points on New Year's Day, that would go a long way to making me feel better, but... I just cannot see it at the moment. Yeah, I agree. And that's a massive concern. Um, Villa, I I like this question from Vinil Aldinho. Uh, What should Dean Smith's New Year's resolution be? To me, it's open your open your wallet. I mean, it's not his choice, though, is it? I think it, I think he has to demand that there's some there's some action. I don't, I don't know how it works, but Christian Perslow's always come across like he's doing the right thing. And I said, when the when the new owners took over, we need to hold them to account. If Villa are to stay up, we need the money. It needs to be invested. I mean, if you spend twenty million and you end up staying up, it's a good investment. But if you spend another another twenty million and we go down, they'll look at it and say that's bad business. But you get the parachutes. I th- I feel like that you have yeah. to invest now and then. Pull, no pull yeah, back. I agree with you. Because then we've got the squad for the championship. I'm just worried about investing on people that are going to do nothing for us. But so let's say you... Yeah, I, I agree. But if you invest 20 million... I'm not saying we don't need to buy, by the way. We need two, yeah. three players. But if there. you invest 20 million and you don't go up... Uh, sorry, you go down, then Grealish leaves yeah, and yeah. You, you kind of get that money the back. Problem, the problem is is this, that the fees are so out ridiculous nowadays. Mm. It would... And it's so we've gone through. Who do you buy? Proven yeah. Premier League. Who are you going to buy? Stick the ball in there. So a few people have said Glenn Murray. Mm. I mean, because he's not getting a game f- f- for Brighton. I wouldn't see Villa going down that, that kind of route. I just, I don't know what the answer is. I'm, I'm agreeing we need to buy. I'm agreeing we could do with spending some money, but it needs to be on someone that make a tangible difference. Yeah. Right. We're over our time. We took, too, we took too many chances in the summer, and at the moment they're not paying off. Yeah. I think there's only two signings that you could look at. That we made in the summer, I exclude Mings and Hawes and Nel Garzi and that because I think they're already there in my in my eyes. But the ones we've brought in, there's only two you can look at and say for me that they're on the on the right side of a success at the moment. Heaton and Engels, Heaton and Gilbert. I was going to say mm. Engels has started well, but it's faded. I think if Mings comes back, then that centre back pairing can become what it was. I don't yeah, see the reason. We shipping why goals with that as a pairing is the problem. I don't know. I mean, this has been such a rambly podcast. It's, so, <laughs> it's so hard to do when really things is. are like this and there's been so many games and there's so much going on, but it feels, you feel stressed. I feel, I feel more stressed now than I did when I came in. Usually, I feel like a bit liberated, a bit free. No, from, I don't. I, I, feel, I feel tight. I feel like the shackles are on me. I yeah. handbrakes on. Well, let's talk about a couple of positive things while we're... I'd love to know what you're going to pull out of the While we're here. Well, the mugs, first of all. <laughs> Is that a positive? Yeah. I'm not sure many people are going to look at us shifting a few mugs as positive. No, but uh, we've, we've got rid of all the mugs. I think the positive is that they've all been sold now. So <laughs> thank you for that. Thanks to Jay Morgan and anyone that bought a mug massively. It's bad when that's the most positive thing Appreciate you can Appreciate that. We do have something to give away. That's positive. Oh, yeah. So um, our friend at 1 to 11, Kits, Sean, uh, he does a wonderful job, does loads of kits, lots of villa kits, which is great. But also, a lot of villa kits at the moment. Also, the ones I want, though, Sean. Nice Italian. The ones I don't have. Nice Italian numbers, often a few German Ooh, kits in there. Some good Fiorentina batish too, to one with Nintendo on. That's about 250 quid. Yeah, now, but I've, I've seen a few prices. I very much like. But you have a chance to win... One of these bad boys, um, the ninety-seven. Not that one that you're wearing. No, no. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight York. Um, Did you say York on the back? Yes. Oh, nice. And it's a large, just just so you know. Um, and I think he's priced it at sixty-five quid. We are going to give it away to a lucky um, 
viewer. So we'll give it away next week. We'll put a tweet out after. Well, there's not many lucky viewers having just sat through the last hour <laughs> yeah. of us. Well, that's it. If you've stayed for this reward. long, then, then you might be in with a chance. So we'll put a tweet out. We'll need you to make sure you're following the Villa View. Make sure you're following 1 to 11 kit and, and retweet it as well. And we'll give that away next week. Um, we're also, as the Villa View, going to give away a few shirts to the Ghanaians. Uh, the Ghana Lions. Uh, the Ghana Lions. I've pulled out a couple of shirts that I'm ready to, to part with um, and, and we're all going to look in our kind of kit collection, see what we can give away, whether they're shirts, training gear, kind of other tops, that kind of thing. Because we, we talked about the Ghana documentary, didn't yeah, we? Really good. A couple of weeks ago. It's brilliant. So um, would love anybody that's organising a, a postal delivery. I'm not sure if there's been one. I know that a few people have talked about it. I've seen through a few bits and pieces on Twitter. If there is one, if, if you know of one that's kind of um, already been organised, please do DM me or the channel or, or Dan and, and we'd like to kind of organise something from us and from the Villa View kind of uh, following. Uh, that would be really good. And it'd be nice for something to come out of this, this new year where it's not been yeah. so... Not been so hot, and maybe no, we can, I we can do some good stuff. I feel like I've lost my way with the Villa View a little bit over the last month or so. Been really busy over Christmas with work and other things, yeah. As well, so I feel like we'll get back into a routine in the new year. Like a few match previews have gone awry at yeah. the moment. I don't think there'll be one for Burnley. It probably doesn't make sense. I've been just done this podcast, but we'll get back into more of a natural rhythm, yeah. After Christmas, won't we? Yeah, it's been yeah, it's been tricky. We've obviously we talked about Rollo going and Dolan going earlier on in the season. I think we've. We kind of try to keep it going as much as we, we can. We did a good job initially. I think we, yeah. we're, we're, we're a bit like Villa. We've hit, yeah. a, bit, we've hit a bit of a difficult patch. Yeah, but we'll we'll keep it going as, as much as we can, and um, yeah, we'll get back on track. Yeah. In 2020, hopefully Villa will do the same. Um, so happy birthday, Villa! Four yeah. years old. Last uh, last podcast of the decade. That's it, isn't it? We're yeah. done. We'll yeah. be back next week with another podcast. Hopefully, a win to talk about. Who knows? I've not got my fingers crossed, but you never know. Mm. You never know. We shall see. All right, stick with Happy the channel. New Year. Stick with the villa. Happy New Year. Up the villa. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.